good good friend came over last evening yesterday afternoon so I didn't get my I didn't get to sit down and relax and share voices yesterday. That was my buddy who owns Trophy Hunter Sport Fishing. Probably the best fisherman I've ever witnessed in my life. Dead serious. <laughs> I love watching people that are good at the craft. I love it. Well, especially in the outdoor world. I've guided with some some people up north who were just such a treat to watch, hunt, to pack horses with, to move um, numerous horses through the mountains flawlessly. It's just really cool. I love watching people that are really good at the craft. This friend of mine, trophy hunter, sport fishing, he's uh, he's, if it's ridiculous. I mean, I I know how to catch fish. I know how to hunt game, and I've known a bunch how to do a bunch of other things. Um, <clears throat> But it's fun for me to watch someone when I when you think you've got to figure it out. Here's an example. I'll go, we'll go fishing. We'll go ripping down this one place, and first thing in the morning, first light, both going down to this one long coastline. And he might start at that end. I'll start at this end. Not planned. It's just the way it goes. And uh, by the time we pass each other, one pass, I've not had a bite yet. <laughs> it's usually I got to work it, and every time I had three on, bonked one. What? You almost know that he's already nailed. It's pretty cool to watch. A little babble there. So, no video last night. What else? A couple things um, <clears throat> that, I, that need to be spoken about between all of us, everybody in the planet, is um, how the last handful of years people have been somehow have been uh, coerced into not listening to people on various topics. Be like, no, you're wearing this. I can't talk to you. Don't let them speak. Or, oh, you're speaking out against this. I can't talk to you. Don't listen to them. Shut them up. Don't let them talk. That is a very, very big mistake in life. The number one reason for all relationship failures is lack of communication. Number one. And, it, and that's like, you can use it as in... Uh, smooth communication. It's like if you take care of your pennies, your dollars take care of themselves, right? So if you promoted good communication amongst the people as the pennies, then the countries will be the dollars and they will take care of themselves, right? Smooth, clear communication. No matter what side of the fence you sit on, you still got you still have to listen to what's going on on the other side of the fence because if you don't, then all of a sudden, some kind of uh, discomfort, awkwardness comes up. The next thing you know, you are at war with somebody on their side of the fence, and they don't even know it, and it just keeps growing between your ears, and it gets out of hand, and then something gives in a bad way. I hope I'm making sense. What I'm saying is, I posted a video of RFK Jr. I don't know the guy. I have a clue who he is. Apparently he's a Democrat. I don't give a shit what he is. Um, he has a voice, and I was urged to listen to it. I'm like, okay, I'll listen to it. I don't have the brain set to go, why is he a Democrat? I can't listen to him. Yeah, I'm going to listen to him. I listen to him. And uh, from what I know, from my own diligence, that man repeated and shared accurate, accurate past history. And... Uh, he seemed to be a very wise, intelligent man, but one thing that I took from him and why I encourage I shared him on the community page yesterday to be listened to is because he spoke truth about the WAR. And he spoke against WAR. And right now, currently, that is frickin' platinum gold. Because nobody is doing it, and the absolute evil bad guys are trying not to have communication at all when it comes to... P-E-A-C-E. -E. Okay? And another thing, too, is RFK Jr., uh, the mainstream is assaulting him right now. So it doesn't matter who you are, what political party you may be behind, or, or whatever it is you support today, if mainstream is attacking your credibility and trying to suppress your speech, right now, I would take that as they're probably one of the good guys because the bad guys is mainstream. Anyways, what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter what side of the fence you guys sit on, the man is promoting P-E-A-C-E. -E. 
He's promoting it, and he's speaking against WAR, and he has a voice that's being heard, he's got a big reach. I don't give a shit who you are. If you're in that position right now, and you got a voice, and you get that reach, you better have a listen. Right? You gotta have a listen. It's time, and uh, if you listen, I'll, I'll be able to, uh, he delivers, he delivers what's going on quite clearly, and he delivers quite clearly and accurately what is going to happen to us if things escalate and it's not good he even talks about exactly what was spoken about in the 60s when they talked about what would happen if a nuclear BOMB went off and the fallout would circulate around the globe and the rain and the weather would take it down to the ground and and uh, contribute to annihilating us right and then, furthermore, you know what else I did last evening on that note? I actually tried to make a post with a poll to put on the community page. I did it twice. And what I was trying to say was, what do you people think? What do we think? What would you think should happen to someone today who is in persuasive politics who suggests and supports the use of nuclear BOMBSs today. And I put one of the options was, should they be incarcerated immediately? Should they be put in jail immediately? And I also put something like, who cares? Right? And I tried to put that poll up, and YouTube deleted it, annihilated it instantly. And I'm like, what? So I actually took a screenshot of it, and I tried to post a screenshot. Nope. Won't let me. <laughs> How creepy is that? How creepy is that? I tried to put a poll out to see how everybody felt about a mainstream politician who promotes and supports nuclear weapons being used today on our planet, in our oxygen, in our atmosphere. Ooh, mainstream wouldn't let me do it. Creepier and shit, right? Creepier and shit. But anyways, no matter how much you think you hate one party or some of your side of the fence, be it, pull up your big person pants. <laughs> Just pull up your big person pants just for a little bit and listen to the man speak. Listen to the man speak. At least you'll get a, a hint of a human being speaking against WAR and promoting P-E-A-C-E. -E. Why am I spelling it out? Because you can't, you can't speak against it right now publicly. You'll get deleted. <laughs> what? So, pull up your, your big boy and your big girl pants. Suck up 40 minutes and listen to someone speak. And let your gut do the rest. Take from it what you will leave it. But just listen. That's all I'm saying. Now, let's get some voices heard. Man, I'm feeling I think I split. Hand split. Uh, six cords of fur. <laughs> Firewood. So far. And I've got maybe one to go. But I got one big fur log out there. It's about... I think it's about 36 inches thick, and I'm leaving it because I'm thinking maybe it could be used for something creative, like a big cool table, a one piece flat top table and whole nine yards. I saw, I saw uh, one really cool one made on online a little while ago. So I'm saving that log until my light bulb goes off. But anyway, that's enough babble for me. But please, please, you guys, listen to people and let them speak no matter what. Don't shut anybody out. Everybody counts. You don't have to agree with somebody. You don't have to. But you can take from it what you will or leave it, right? All right, here's a long one. Listen to this. This is titled, I live in a nursery with their young ones. Water, flower, email number three. All right, here we go. Water, flower, here again. As promised, some more experiences for you all and how I came to make peace with that previous situation. First, a little paragraph about me that may or may not help anyone hearing it. I've been touched a bit. My mom has said, since I was very little, not like being able to wear a watch, it dies within hours, knowing things I shouldn't be able to, that sort of thing. Like lots of people, if the truth was known, recently being, recently being trotting heavily on wings of angels, so to speak, a benign but ill-placed tumor had gone undiagnosed nearly two decades, even though I showed all the signs that should have been investigated. This led to horrible seizures, as an artery in my head was getting pinched off. 
Three times prior to this discovery, I saw the tunnel of light. But having practiced lucid dreaming and yoga awareness, plus wild present living, I could come down out of it each time. More happened than I will, than I, more happened than I will relate here. Wow, that sounds really interesting, and I wonder if I missed your previous emails. During the emergency surgery, I think I may have died or, clum, or come close to it. I don't know. Because they have accidentally deleted the records. From what the nurses told me, I don't know how I can continue to draw breath. But the veil, or weave as some call it, have been ever even thinner ever since. This is almost a year ago as I write this, June 2023. The way I see it, and what I say to folks, is that the game is now broken for me. I can see behind the curtains. Things have energies that I can translate in the moment. Larger patterns continue to emerge, which is ratcheting me into real truth and further away from the life I knew. The ignorant, fake, one where stuffed suits have the audacity to talk about anything with authority, which they grant to themselves. Psh. By any definition, certain civilizations qualify as oversized cults, intentionally farming their followers. I could go on for days and prove what I say. For now, suffice to say, yes, it is painful to be born into truth, but I will not resent that it was necessary now that I am here. I just won't. So back to where I let off in the other email. Dog chasing multiple beings and barking all night. Them making whoops and barks of their own. Me spending half my time with the neighbors, half alone in a single wide, awake all night with the chitter chatter of potential mind speak, or my own worries. What's the difference when you can't rest? So what did I do? I cheated. Now I have a housemate, and the male energy has helped calm the lone female terror. Oh, thank God for that. What also helped is that the onward is that with the onward migration of the people to their summer vacay, only the very young have stayed behind. And I can tell the dog has made friends with one of them. Excuse me. At the end of my watch at the neighbor's house, there was an early morning of the typical mischief of the little ones, of the little teasing, sorry, of the littles teasing the dog. Except this time, a juvenile called out from only 20 feet away from me, on the other side of the woodpile. It made the sweetest, most innocent, loveliest whoop, like a little girl child's falsetto. It went, ooh-ah, and it melted my heart. Now I call her sweet girl, and we're out with the dog, and when we're out with the dog, she entices the dog away. I guess it softened up my fear some. Once we get near any of these maids, maple, sorry, once we get near any of these maple stands, we'll hear a low voice say, woof, like a person saying the word, as deep as the voice could go. The dog hears it too, and chases her around the trees. I don't know the smarter who was smarter than whom, because the dog will fake the girl out, leaving her to give herself away in the noisy leaves while the dog stays still. I've seen it half a dozen times. Now it just makes me laugh, especially when the dog is winning by putting the girl in the position of being discovered running in one direction, or risk being seen from the other side as we continue walking. I swear the dog does this on purpose. She takes great joy in this game. Sweet girl has been, has been the only being that comes close to what this dog can do in the forest. Anatolian Shepherd. These are beasts. So when discovery is imminent, a girl takes to the trees. The dog tracks her in the canopy invisible, just the way she does the owls and eagles when she is protecting her chickens. It seems endearing, but I'll never fully trust their relationship. The dog is selective in her friendship, at least, but I do not appreciate it when they smear her with poop. Sometimes it's so caked on her fur like a green meringue pie. No way it gets like that just by rolling in it, which she does with all kinds of stuff. Other times with long stripes of that green poo like she got finger painted. Actually, you know what? Quick interruption on that one. Once we had this psycho cook <laughs> who 
for a short time in camp, a new one who'd never been in remote camp before, and she was too terrified to go use the frickin' outhouse, which was behind the cabin, and she was dropping bombs on the other side of the airstrip that we didn't know about. And after she basically got fired for being cuckoo, her camp dog came back with perfect smears along her back like he took a buttering knife and went <laughs> It was absolutely disgusting. And we would do paper, scissors, rock, see who had to go clean the dog. But I remember that. It was like it was put on there, perfect, perfect line smeared on her back. So, I'm just saying, the dogs can do that themselves. <laughs> Sadly, first-hand witness. Anyway, sorry. But it hurts her feelings. It has happened right in front of us, or rather, I should say, in our presence, albeit behind the maple trees. She never cries out, so I don't think they have heard her so far, but she will come out from behind the stand and fly by us as she books it to the house. And she hides away, sad and depressed for the rest of the day. That pisses me off. So, there you go. And whoever heard of a dog getting depressed over rolling in poop? It makes them happy. The neighbor who owns the dog accuses me, asking, What did you do to my dog? Oh, geez. It just occurred to me that my laughing may have incited a little payback. Oh, man. Okay, sorry, dog. Adding it to my understanding and adjusting accordingly. I haven't tested the waters with her owner yet, but this, about this, but the fact that he is a retired office suit that staun and staunchly maintains that the deer up the tree last year was from a puma is what tells me he has to come to it himself, even after having to install a whole new satellite dish right alongside the old one that is wrenched over. Unusable and immovable, steel, shorn and twisted by the wind, he says. Sigh. I don't know why the dog lets them do it, unless she keeps getting tricked. It only happens once in a while and less each time, so maybe she is learning not to trust them. Good for her. When I see her, I give her I give her scratches galore and encourage her to only play at a distance and only when she feels up to it, knowing the stakes. I know she understands me, that I understand her woos, and she usually perks back up. This is the third step in overcoming that month of terror I wrote you about. After the cheat and timing, companionship and the experience. Nobody else believes us, so it's just dog and I. Now, instead of that if you only knew face she used to give me when I sat when I sat the house we share long knowing gazes and silent support in the true manner of all members of the club in no return you have animal members too Steve now we need doggy attire <laughs> yeah. she's not giving me permission to share her name lol but she does love videos with adventure dog as do we all I'm sure you've been a good doggy daddy and given Ruby the talk about Sabe. Anyway, while we were still house-sitting, my friend took the dog on one of their property boundary walks, and she led him to a latrine of sorts. I asked him to get a video of this for me, and he did. On that same day they found it, I was listening to the journey from the neighbor's house, which sits on the same elevation as the other hill. Patiently I waited, having made trips to that area many times over the last few years before the surgery, and I could easily track their noises directly across the small draw. About then, the sirens sounded. They sounded like old-timey cop sirens that are lower in register than current cars. At first, it was one short upswing, exactly like flipping on a short warning that goes up and stops. In a couple seconds, it sounded off again, this time going all the way up. Suspend a moment and come all the way down, then go up again. As this, I thought, sucker trying to outrun the cop in a 30 zone, dummy. But then another voice joined in, harmonizing. At the beginning of the third wave, if you will, both voices stopped simultaneously. Right when their nest was being disturbed, the timing was perfect for if the animals became aware of company, and I weigh that against the chance of a sheriff chasing someone through town at the exact moment. Small town, not common. Hmm. I thought my friend, who knew what I suspected, would for sure be convinced now. Those voices were so loud, close, unmistakable, right? No, he had heard nothing. 
but acknowledged that, really, nothing he heard registered, and sirens would be included for that city boy. Maybe it was the height and the ability to selectively broadcast? Who knows? It's happened to you, so you know how it goes. Again, I was alone in my experience getting the side eye. Then I saw the video. It is just as you say. Some have it in their face and still won't call it what it is. The file says it's too big to attach, but I'll, but I will, but will be sent as a link to Google Drive, which I'm not handy with. So please bear with me. But to describe for people in case you can't share it with everyone, there's the video. Okay, let's watch the video. So as you can see, the original sample here. Older samples. You might be able to hear the fly in the background too. It's just one part. background that one's almost bald on one side level with my head. That one is higher. <laughs> and there's the dog. All right, so one thing with that video, what I see just as just for me being a, a dumbass looking at a video, but with my background of what I've done in my career. Um, I have seen the big cedar trees with the bark stripped clean and but what I saw was about 14 feet high from the bottom up and I have had other eyewitness people from BC tell me that they one place rural ranch home they saw the being ripping across their cattle pasture right in front of them but before that they heard the screams and before that they found the footprints going up to a big cedar tree the footprints and they saw where the two inch strips of bark had been peeled up 10 or 12 feet and they could see where the bark strips were, were dragging in the snow beside the footprints as it left that big cedar tree. So we do know 110% yes they do strip the bark off cedar trees. Now I have seen cedar trees with bark patterns such as in this video stripped off and I think it may have possibly been from bears, I don't know. Um, now, one thing I can tell you with bears, bears will, black bears, will bed in the general same little spot and they will use an area right outside there where they put, where they'll, it's their bathroom. And you will find piles of black bear crap there, 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 there all in about a, your average bedroom floor area. So when I see these droppings that in the video, I'm thinking black bear right away. But I wasn't there and I can't say that for sure. I don't know. That's just what my brain tells me after watching the video and my past experience. But what I can say is if you want to and you're curious and I'm sure she would be absolutely accommodating would be to take a sample of that and get it to Dr. Melba Ketchum. And she will, she will be a trusted person to find out and share exactly what was in the DNA of that scat. You send it to Melba, it's not gonna disappear like the other guys do to the public. It's not gonna disappear, and they're not just gonna take it and come back and say, oh, it was a, it was a fox, it was a bear. Where's the sample, oh, we lost it, right? 
Interesting video. Again, I wasn't there. I didn't see up close the details. So carrying on. There were several piles of several piles of dark segments of scat laying inside the area that had naturally formed among the circular stand of old growth cedar. It looked as though some alfalfa fed horses were hanging out in the canopy. The piles were among a mishmash of brambles as though dropped from above, as they were falling apart some. Frankly, there's no way to squat in the brush. Bear and cat prefer to perform poops on smooth ground, as we know, and hate getting a dirty derriere. <laughs> the Oregon grape and branches from windfall was tall, leafy, and prickly. Also, no primate poop falls from trees they sleep in. The exterior of a couple of trees have been shredded to ribbons on the bark. Not the claw markings we know from bear and cat. These trees have been sliced upwards in inch-wide strips for them, dangling from where they were still attached to the tree, clean through and through. Single slice that would break a Stanley utility knife. Smooth edge, perfect ribbons of bark that left the tree bare. Looks as though there's been looks as though this has been used several times. From the looks of other parts of the tree and other trees, I've seen the native folks out here use cedar thongs to lace through their fish and fire roasting. But this was that on steroids. I hope the video goes through. That's when I knew I live in a nursery. The more I walk around to see the evolving stick structures, strange barefoot prints size 6 in dirt along the bushes on private property never owned before, and I don't care who you are, babies need safety. Which probably explains the ferocity some people face out there. We know better than to run into a bear in the woods who has cubs. Imagine the hell one of these moms would unleash on you. Just saying. Everyone get caught in a moment. Look for ways to show a little compassion when you can. We are all capable. A couple of past realizations. In 2011, my husband at that time and I were staying for a while with his mom near Toodle, Washington. During some bad seizure times, on days of strength, I would travel all over the area trying to cover every forest road we could find and I loved it. One day we had parked on a side road to hike the public lands near Mount St. Helens. It was remarkable that on each of these hikes there were little to no birds, no other small wildlife wherever we went. We came across old cougar scat, weathered in almost all fur, looked like hemp rope in the middle of the road. I figured it was eating everything. Lots of large swaths of logged land. But we never scared anything up from the slough. Only once coming across four elk in 18 months. Slough is a thick leafed bush. Noisy. As the sun was going over the mountains, we thought we'd better head back to the car. It was surprised then to hear a howl. And we remarked about how it was at least a sign of something living. When we heard another, we kind of stepped up the pace. We didn't have more than, what, half a mile to go on the winding road back to the car. When the next couple howls came from more directions, and sticks began to crack around us in different directions, we said to each other, the pack must be looking at us as food. We began rushing in earnest. By the time we were within sight of the car, we were full-on running, top speed, getting close, closed in on, multiple howls and wood snapping all around. We used the keyless button to unlock the Saturn to get in as fast as possible. We didn't see anything at all. It was all sound. Not until a month ago, while doing research for my own science article on Pacific Northwest megafauna, did I see that biologists have only recently counted wolves to the lower Cascades in single digits. They were not in the Helens area in 1999. Holy F. Debatable. That's just for me. <laughs> I, I, do, I only listen. Side note. I, when it comes to wildlife sightings and true facts, I only listen to the people. Period. I listen to ranch owners, farmers, hunters, hunting guides, hikers. That's who I listen to when it comes to the truth about where wildlife resides. Sorry. <laughs> Even earlier than that, when I was attending Humboldt State University in the Redwoods, far from my friends and family in 1992, trying to find my people, not fitting in with either the hippies or the loggers, I attended a Yurok 
You rock medicine circle. Why you are okay medicine circle. The shaman was a white dude and explained how many years he had put in the time for the actual native healer and trusted him to fill that role for the tribe. There was just nobody left. We passed a peace pipe around and the Yurok elder who co-hosted the circle asked if any women who were having their time to not smoke the pipe, as women are unclean when they are bleeding. I was, unfortunately for me, but I then weighed whether the spirits would mind since I had no idea when I would get this chance again. I took the pipe, nothing exploded, haha. <laughs> but something rode home with me that night. It was as real as my mom or my friend sitting next to me. The way you can just tell someone is near you when you aren't necessarily looking. I even waved my right arm through the passenger seat the whole 45 minutes back fully expecting to touch something. I even talked to it and started to feel a little guilty, thinking, oh shit, I just pissed off a Native American ghost and I don't even believe in ghosts. For three days it stayed in my little dorm room with me. It may have followed me into the bathroom and I asked it to give me privacy there, and it did. But it was still there in the main room when I got out. I could feel it clear as day. I can't emphasize that enough. By the end of the second day, I was just making myself feel better by treating it like a guest, telling it jokes, <laughs> boring it with my young woman woes, and watching old-time movies. I was going through a very rough emotional time in a long-distance relationship with a douchebag, and cried a lot then. One night I was crying hard and begged whatever invisible god exists for helping releasing me from this torture. Suddenly I was having a vision, looking through a large bird who was flying around my own my old town like an eagle or hawk. You mentioned birds being a strange pattern. Funny that you comment on that is what reminded me of this experience. It flew over the house my boyfriend was living in, and a strange penetrating gaze showed me, somehow, I can't explain, that my heart had no reflection there. In other words, he didn't love me. I immediately sat up, opened my eyes, and breathed a free breath. I let that relationship go and never looked back, and I've only sought people where I can see my heart reflected. The fourth day I got out of my sleepy morning shower, and when I came back out to the main room I could feel it was gone. I almost cried, and I have no idea why. Like when a friend goes home and goes home and you don't know you will ever see them again. I've never shared this with anyone until now. In the full two months I've been a member of this club. The honesty to myself about my situation that this demands has, I think, made me a better person. My hit and miss relationship of 16 years is now no comfort to me. His disbelief of our experiences, what we both see, and furthermore his demeaning of it, has emptied my belly of taste for anything that denies reality. My family has believed in them all our lives, but now that I'm right smack in the middle of Sabe Central, they won't talk about it at all. The, the hypocrisy of them, the public and authorities, even those claiming to be searching for Sabe. It is all bullshit. I see that now. I feel duped to the max. The trauma people talk about the trauma people talk about is half from being awakened. Half the fallout from the rest of their lives not making sense. Ugh. But as I said just now, living in absolute truth, even though it is harsh, painful, ugly. I wouldn't want it any other way. Embrace the ugly. See the truth. I will send the field notes in another email as they can probably make a good guide. I think I'll work on that for the future. The way Parks warned about other things. Ha ha. Take care. All right. You're finding comfort in your journey. That's a good thing. There's a lot of people that aren't today. And for everyone who just heard this, take from what you will leave it, right? There's somebody ripping through their their uh, their ride and they're sharing the ride with us. And it sounds like they're finding peace, and that's pretty that's that's good progress finding peace, especially today. Not too many people want us to have peace. But again, uh, if you if you would go grab some of those samples if you're really curious to want to and you really want to confirm what you're seeing finding. And uh, get one of those samples to Melba, Dr. Melba Ketchum. And if you'd like to, I can get a, I have a direct line to her. 
And if you uh, want to email me back and find out how you can do that. Now, adventure dogs up there doing their job, barking at something or somebody. I see somebody else phone here. My puzzle pieces are small in rural Ohio. It was around 1978 and I was 13 years old. The area we lived in was only a few miles from the south edge of town. To the west and south of our location, the area was even less populated with an abundance of small farms and rolling hills. The woods behind our house started on the far side of a cornfield that wrapped around three sides of the property. The woods were thick with small creeks and ponds. They went all the way to the closest town with few scattered homes. My sister and I walked those woods often with our dog, a basset mix, without ever seeing another person. I've been back there alone with my dog more times than I can count and had never been afraid. It was mid to late summer and very hot. Air conditioning was rare and we often waded the creek, played in the water from the water hose or went to the shopping mall for ways to escape the heat. On this day, my friend who was two years older and I took a homemade blue jean blanket, blanket into, the, into the woods. A homemade blue jean blanket, blanket, that's different. We were only about 50 yards in the woods and under, a, under the dense canopy, enjoying at least a 10 degree temperature difference. All right, I gotta do my job and go see what the dog's barking at. I'll be right back. Uh, all good, no bear. We spread out the thick, heavy blanket over the broken twigs and leaf litter and lay down with our feet facing the deeper woods. We began fanning our shirts and talking. I don't know how long we had been there, but it had been long enough to notice when an acorn or something fell close to our blanket. We thought nothing of it when it happened again, though we didn't actually see what made the noise or where it landed, only that it was close. After laying there for so long with nothing, when the third hit the ground in a matter of a minute, I noticed it came from, it came in from an angle. She must have as, must have as well because without a word, we both screamed, grabbed the blanket and ran. In hindsight, I wish I looked around before running. Later it felt like nothing and we never talked about it. But that same summer, the same friend and I were going to sleep out in my homemade playhouse, which was basically a shed my dad built with built-in bunk beds and a recycled pitcher window. The playhouse was about 100 feet out and faced the back of my parents' house. It was already dark out and I was unrolling an extension cord for light when my friend stopped me, saying a large black figure with very long arms was standing beside the back of the playhouse and had taken one step sideways, disappearing behind it. We ran, dragging the electric cord behind us. I wondered as an adult that maybe she just didn't want to want to sleep out, but that would be unlikely since she wasn't a liar and, as the older of the two of us, had no problem seeing what she did or didn't want to do. What seems strange to me now, and as vivid as those memories are, we never spoke about it later. It was only it was the only two times I ever remember being afraid, and we lived there for seven years. Decades later, I found out that the same year, a friend of my parents said he was driving at night nearby when he saw a large dark figure beside the road. He said it looked like a Bigfoot and stepped off of the berm, disappearing into the dark. Later, I read of another similar encounter as his on the same road, documented on a popular website. That story was not his. I lost touch with my friend after we moved away and wished I had asked her about the second encounter. Strange that we never talked about it, and stranger yet that it took me decades to put these two encounters together. Bigfoot never crossed my mind. I really wish I had just stopped, waited, and looked around in the woods that day. I strongly suspect that it was, and still I've got nothing. After you mentioned artist redurings, I decided to send you the recently finished image of my puzzle. I'm far from a professional artist, but felt compelled to put it on canvas. Some in this group might enjoy seeing it. On a side note, 
I keep waiting for you to say something I disagree with while having your heartfelt rants. I just say, Steve speaks 80s. We think the world of you, and the world would be a better place with more like you. Sincerely, Deborah. P.S. Considering your location, I hate it when you say you're unarmed. Dang. <laughs> I appreciate your kind words. And that's uh that's a cool painting. Let me zoom in on that sucker a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. It's pretty cool. You're talented. Yeah, I'll put that up in the video for sure. Let me save that to my phone. There you go, more people in the club in a return, right? Yeah, you know uh, that last time when I went out with my gun. And a few people gave me shit for it. It's just tough. It's tough leaving here. It's so busy. And what I was leaving to go do, I had to go meet friends who have been diagnosed with the big bad C and had to go to their daughter, see all their daughters and, and reunite and go to the to go to graduation and spend time and uh, make sure I brought all the healthy food and gifts from our uh, native elder friends. And uh, I had my gun and all my stuff ready to go. I just forgot to grab the rifle and throw it in the truck. Otherwise, I normally would have had a gun, especially up on that hill up there. That's where I saw that monster bear in front of me, too. He would have been in the truck with me. Had to brought my rifle. Anyway. All right. I appreciate you saying that into us. Big time. It's really generous when people do that. you got to think about it, you guys. You know how long it takes to... Uh, sit down and type out an email and then go send it away and find the email address correctly and send it to strange people to be shared with the world. That's, that's time. That's time of life. Time of life donated from a person is valuable, man. It's the most valuable thing in, valuable thing in the planet is time of life. It ain't money. Anyway, stop me short of a battle. I got my coffee going, right? All right, what do we got? This title, questions and answers. There's two emails in here. All right, in one folder. Okay, mark this as red. Questions and answers, title this email. Steve is wondering if you've ever listened to a guy named Dave at the X-22 report. If so, he would be worthy of a shout out to your listeners. I sent you a recount of my Sabe experiences back in the fall of 22. I left out so much information in that email that I'm ashamed for you to read it. If you find that email, you can share it if you want. I forgot to tell you that I watch all your shows for the last two years and appreciate what you're doing for the people. That said, some of the info that I left out in my previous email is where I am from and my encounters. I am from Searcy County, Arkansas. S-E-A-R-C-Y, County, Arkansas, where my first two encounters happened. My third encounter happened just across the bayou from where I now live near Scottsville, Arkansas. I think my previous email was titled in the subject of, quote, three-time club member, end quote, if that will help you find it. Suggestion, can we get a Norris club going? <laughs> I'm 59 years old, and I now have been a knower since 1973, when I saw my first Sabe. I don't know if it means anything, but all my encounters with the Sabe have taken place when my brother was with me. He's 13 months older than me. We've always been close. We've hunted and fished together all our lives. Last spring, turkey hunting, when the Sabe growled at us, really made both of us, really made both of us mad as f. We both instantly went to drawing down on where the growl that vibrated through my chest came from, with safeties off, and ready to make him heavy with lead. We waited for about five minutes and didn't hear anything moving. Then, as we went on up the hill, we could hear it paralleling us up to the top of the hill. One hour later, it scared off the gobbler we were after. I'll be back this spring for another chance at that turkey. I've been after the same turkey for three years now. I hope Sabe didn't get him, and I don't want him to die from old age. This spring I just might have a slug in my pocket, but I'll not give up my hunting spot to no Sabe. I have a lot more information still, and you, and you said to send it all to you. 
When my mother passed away in February of 22, we had her funeral up in the Ozarks where I was raised at Welcome Home, Arkansas. After the funeral, I was talking to my aunt. I asked her if she knew anything about Sabe, and she told me three different stories from when my dad was a young boy with my grandpa. Same place as me and my brothers encountered in 73. All these years and we never knew the stories. Well, I guess this is enough for now. If you want, you can use my name, because I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. When you know, you know. If you want, you can combine both my emails and tell and tell your own story about it, if you want or not. Take from it what you will or leave it. Thank you for being you. Sincerely, Mark Small. Mark, thank you. And I have your email like right here in the next one. I don't know when I did this, but I did it. And this is Title Three Times Club member now. So I guess this is the first one. Howdy Steve, I don't care if you use my name. I'm now a member of the club for the third time. I've only had one view of the big guy in the woods, but have had a lot but have had at least three encounters. A little backstory. It started back in 73 when I was just 10 years old. My brother, whom is 13 months older than me, and I were catfishing. We're approximately a half a mile down Red River from my granny's house at a hole of water we called the back of the field hole. We just got to our fishing hole when all hell broke loose in the treetops. The trees started shaking violently about 30 yards away. Then the branches started breaking, making loud snaps. A low, deep growl and a high-pitched screech all mixed together made it feel like the ground was shaking all around us. Needless to say, it didn't take us long to figure out, figure out that we were not wanted in the area. We took off at a fast run, headed for home through the field in what was now full darkness. This monster had followed us all the way back to Granny's house. When we told our folks what had happened, my grandpa had a good idea about what we described but said nothing. Next encounter is about a year later. My brother and I had just got my new bicycles. We were riding down the road to our cousin's house about two miles away. Our mother was following behind us in the car. And this is the same direction down the river as the first encounter. We were coasting down slight incline, not making very much noise. Looking down the road, about 50 yards ahead, there was a steep bank on the right side. It came up that steep bank, 10 to 12 feet tall bank, one leap, and it was standing in the road. He was 9 feet tall and just huge in size. He turned and looked at us as we came skidding to a halt. I locked eyes with him for just a few seconds. We were only 25 feet away from him. He kind of looked dumbfounded and took two steps and crossed the road, then up a steep hill that was near impossible for me to climb up. Up it. Up, sorry. It was about 150 yards to the top of the hill. He was gone over the top in less than 10 seconds. Two down, one to go. Every time I had encounters with these beings, my brothers was with me. Strange, right? 2022, spring turkey season. My brother and I are after a tom over in a chigger hollow. We climbed a small hill up to a saddle, stopped for a breather. This is all happening about half an hour before daylight. While we were taking a breather, we heard the deepest, meanest growl. I can't describe how deep this thing's growl was. Never heard anything like it before. It was damn sure big and had a mean tone. We both instantly turned our 12 gauges in the direction of the monster. And I, yes, I said monster. It then started breaking trees about 30 yards away. We turned to our left and started moving away from there, going up the hill. It paralleled us for a while until daylight. We didn't hear it anymore, or the turkey for that matter. I'm still mad that he molested our hunt. Sorry for such a long e email, but you said to give it all at once, so here it is. Thank you for what you're doing for the world, one email at a time. P.S. I enjoy gathering as many puzzle pieces as I can, and someday we will learn the truth. Some days today, man. Because of people like you emailing all of us, we are learning the truth. We've learned a lot of truth. No matter how many people thinks, no matter how many people think, 
you're not getting anything out of this. We're getting a lot out of this. I am. For sure I am. I'm getting a lot. I'm actually getting ready to write down a whole bunch of solid patterns. You know, when I get a chance, right? It's patterns that we uh, have had thrown in our face and we need to take note of. Patterns. It's almost like another word for knowledge, right? Here. Let's get one more listen. Two. Appreciate you, man. Be careful out there. I hope you get that, Tom. If you've been out for three years, a sucker must have some spurs on it by now, right? Probably a dragging his beard on the ground. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, Steve. Please don't use my name. No problem. And hope it's not typed in the email. <laughs> I hope this finds you well and your whole family safe. I've been watching a YouTube channel every once in a while, but now I watch it every day. As many other people, I also want to thank you for creating this space. This will be my first time talking about my experiences about alternative realities. I don't remember with certainty this sequential order nor the dates when each of these events occurred. The thing that I do remember is how often I was ignored and told to take one or another pill. At this juncture, drinking alcohol and or and or other non-formulary medications. Meditation are as useful and less expensive than the prescription medications I've been offered to resolve my encounters of living in an alternative alternative reality. This is one of the few places I feel comfortable attempting to learn who I am and to live accordingly. So here's my general experience. I know the Sabe exists. I'm not claiming to know much about them. I want to respect their being. I also want my being to be respected. I've heard of the Sabe, and I believe they know that I know of them. I feel I've gotten a whiff of some of them. I felt the intense fear that I've heard others speak about. I felt the vibrations and shaking of my chairs, apartment, and car. I've talked to my mother about this, and although she hasn't confirmed what I've experienced, she has not denied it either. I have lived in North, South, and Central America, visited over 20 countries, and have experienced and have and have had experiences and talked about them. I've been comforted by words of what it might possibly be. I've been accepting these stories and did not think about them further until I began watching your How to Hunt. I was watching because I liked the nature images you shared and I want to know about bears and eagles. The nature of the program changed and I hear more encounters that other people had while in the forest and I found myself saying, I know that story, that happened to me. And then I realized that it wasn't the way many people experienced, sorry, then I realized that it wasn't the way many people experienced the world. I became curious. Since I was about two or three years old, I recall not wanting to go to a certain to certain places or do certain things because it felt like something was going to go very wrong. And those places scared me to death. I would simply sit on the ground and refuse to move. My parents were kind people and never forced me to obey them when they saw the terror in my face. I often felt I could see what was going to happen. The visions were murky and not clear, but I sometimes would see things that looked like bears fighting and I would feel either terrified or hypnotized to explore the situation further. When I felt hypnotized, I felt no fear and would sometimes walk toward the place from where the feeling, the sound or smell was emanating. And then I would feel like something would say, what the hell are you thinking? Snap out of it. Sometimes I'd hear myself shout, stop. I feel like something beyond my parents has been keeping me safe and continues to keep me safe. I don't know what or who it is, but so far I am safe. Sometimes I think it's tuition. I will often be very still and sense it. I do not often know what I am being kept safe from. I get it a lot when I drive. It only happens when I'm not thinking. I'll decide to change lanes while driving and a big rock will come down the hill or I slow down and I don't know why, but suddenly something's Something falls off the back of a truck and would have hit and killed me had it not slowed down. Off my friends will talk to me about issues they have and I will answer them with words I know didn't even go through my brain. 
I don't even bring up names of people or places when my friend had not told me details, and afterward I don't even remember having spoken. But they tell me what I said, and I'm surprised at what sage advice I spoke. I often feel like I slip into a different reality, that I'm not on the planet Earth at all. I disappear and then I come back and I remember nothing. Once I said out loud that I didn't want to be here anymore, and I curled up into the fetal position and wept. Then I did the disappearing thing. Then I did the disappearing thing and could not remember anything until I felt myself going to a place I'd never been, through a dimly lit tunnel, squatting. And then I said, stop, I'm not ready. And I snapped back to the planet. I have no way to describe it, but I have yet to be able to explain this to any professionals, bracket, that didn't want to put me on medications and give me a rest, end bracket. Since hearing other people's stories, I'm wondering if I am part Sabe or something. Why do I keep disappearing and returning? Where do I go? I believe we're in an era where revelations are being made all the time, and that all I can do is keep my mind open. I'm a brown person, and I feel that I may even resemble the Sabe from drawings and photos that have been shown. I feel as though there is a maternal figure watching over me. Bye, intuition Sabe. I've avoided racial situations in which I could have been very badly hurt or killed. I watch the news occasionally, and I see a place burned down minutes, or, minutes after I've left. I feel a commonality with the Sabe. I feel like they cloak and remain hidden in order to survive. I do much the same. I don't trust or like technology, and it often makes me sick to my stomach. I feel like it also disturbs the Sabe. I find myself avoiding everyday people more and more. I can feel evil coming off of them. I think the Sabe can also feel it too, and some of them have been protecting me from it. It is already long. I'll stop here. I've had so many experiences that I'm so grateful to you, Steve. I'm happy that you have given me a safe place to share. It is comforting to be myself and not to be persecuted for it. Please stay safe. You've given me and many others hope and courage. P.S. to the Sabe and alternate beings. I often imagine... I often imagine I understand how you may feel or live. I do not need nor want to see you. I know you exist. And I ask that you know I respect you, and I ask for the same respect. Thank you, me and my dog. <laughs> All right, there you go. I can't say that the Sabe are on YouTube listening to me talk. They probably uh, absolutely don't think they are, that's for sure, because they'd be hearing me right now from the forest right there. Maybe. I don't know. Technology. In the real world, you know, a lot of people, a lot of outdoors people, hunters and anglers, they'll bitch about the internet and how it's changing hunting and changing fishing and blah, 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 blah. Technology's doing this, technology's doing that. It'll tell you what, it's not doing shit outside of us out there in the real world. As far as the rules changing and shit, I mean, okay, what am I trying to say before I say the wrong thing? What I'm saying is, when I go out in those mountains and forests and sit and stand and hike and camp and sleep and hunt and do whatever I'm doing, none of this exists. It's, not, it's just still the same forest out there, it's the same mountain, it's the same animals, it's the same energy, it's the same food, it's the same healthy shit going on, and technology hasn't done nothing to me or my mind out there. It's, nothing's changed. It's only when you come back to here and turn the shit on, right? That was a bit of a weird babble. I probably didn't even make sense with that one. Anyway. Anyway, anyway. Time to carry on. My mind's ripping. I think it's better when I read in the evening, because then my day is done, and I'm not preoccupied with thoughts of what i got to do, and I'm not getting jacked up on coffee. Maybe I'll, I'll get back to that routine. But anyway, if you would, if you could, and, uh, do not follow the lead of many out there who are trying to coerce or manipulate all of you to shutting your ears when it comes to what may be the opposition to you. That's the wrong thing to do. If you want peace, if you want to get ahead, if you want to do good in the world, you have to listen to everyone. You have to listen. And you know what? If you think they are bad, then it's probably even more of a, a reason to listen. If you think the person that you don't want to listen to because they represent that group or that party, whatever, well, you better want you better listen to them doubly to 
find out what they're trying to impose and put down on the people, what they're trying to promote, so that you can possibly do something to stop it if it's truly bad for the people. See what I'm saying? Or maybe there is something good coming from someone that needs to speak, that is speaking that needs to be heard, right? So there's there's just as many reasons on both sides of the fence to make, make sure that you listen to people speak, no matter who they are, what they represent, what team they're on. You gotta listen, especially if they have a voice and they're being listened to on a on a large scale. It's very very important you hear what their message is all right because there are a lot of people out there who are spreading the wrong message <clears throat> which basically promotes the demise of us and it stops many of us from having a fair crack at having fun right not ashamed to say it life is supposed to be fun it's supposed to be fun it's supposed to be good healthy this experience you want to, you want to, when it comes to the end of your ride, you want to sit there with a shit eating grin on your face in that casket or wherever you die, knowing that you just had the most absolute funnest rocking it out time while you were here. That's why we're here. We're here to do that. We're not here to control people, kill people, end people's dreams prematurely. We're not here to use people to kill people for our benefit. We're not here to do that. We need to stop that shit. But we need to focus on the, focus on the fun the happy, the good, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing. So we need to listen to everybody speak. We're going to find out who is trying to stop us from having that fun. There you go. So I'll put the link to that video in this description again. And we'll see if any of you who may have shunned the chance to listen to that man speak might pull up your big, your big underwear, big person underwear, Suck it up for a minute, just listen to what he's got to say. Take from what you will or leave it, but take note of what he's saying. I'm babbling, aren't I? All right, here we go. Back to my wood pile <laughs> and other things. And uh, share my story at howtohunt.com. That's where you get your voice heard word for word.